hey everyone uh, thanks for joining the session and yeah so today i will be talking about the topic uh, unknown unknowns and when we add them with chaos engineering we get the security chaos engineering so let's see how it goes and yeah so uh, let's see what, what what what's today's agenda and what we will be talking about so firstly i will give you a brief intro of what what are the complex systems and how they deal with resilience then we will be seeing uh, the unknown unknowns in this complex system and the uh, unknown unknowns for sec uh, related to securities right and then i'll i'll just this case engineering because you have already uh, a lot of session today about related to chaos engineering and resilience so yeah so uh, then we will move ahead and see what is security chaos engineering i'll define define security chaos engineering and i'll give you a map of security chaos engineering and how to use it and what 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 are the some of the use cases and what are some of the benefits of using security chaos engineering then we will go ahead and see some of the uh, some of the hypotheses uh, the uh, the way we can create hypotheses and experiments for security chaos engineering so yeah uh, moving ahead uh, so i'll just give you a brief intro of mine uh, so hi i'm nagesh and i am a co team member uh, at litmus chaos uh, and i am i'm maintaining some of the projects such as litmus ctl and also i was lfx mentor for uh, term 1 uh, this year and also uh, i started as a lfx mentee at litmus uh, last year and I, the journey has been really great so and yeah i recently completed my undergrad at iit roorkee and yeah and also i was a google summer of code uh, student uh, in 2022 for the organization i'm focus and recently uh, i got my kss certification and the chaos uh, developer certification by harness so yeah moving ahead so uh, yeah software sim uh, systems are complex right uh, they they always has been complex there are a lot of complexities in these systems right and a, a, a complex system is one in which uh, we we have a bunch of components interacting with each other and this this get us a non linear behavior because of this interactions with multiple multiple components multiple uh, multiple varieties right so uh, yeah so for example in complex system we have different type of uh, api gateways we have microservice architectures we have infrastructures we have networking and all of these things uh, are involved in complex system right now complex systems are filled with variety they 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 consist of a lot of a, a lot of varieties and variety is the defining element of complexity now variety can be of different type of uh, different kind of uh, it can be of uh, it can be of a uh, variety of components it can be a variety of interactions it can be a variety of potential outcomes in the system right so yeah complex systems are filled with variety they are also adaptive as they as they change and evolve over time and space and change cannot be stopped right now the complex system are also holistic in nature so yeah complex system are variety have varieties and are adaptive and are holistic so what can we do about them and when you write a complex system that you have never made before but nothing goes wrong believe me something is wrong i can feel it so yeah with complexities failure comes and as uh, what's the definition of failure failure is when systems are not working as they are intended to be they 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 they, they are component within the system uh, which are not working as intended right and complex systems and in uh, the failures comes together in complex systems failure is in inevitable and happens all the time so what can we do about them what matters is how we can be prepared for them how can we make make ourselves confident so that we we don't uh, be hesitant of failures right now failure in failure uh, are influenced by multiple factors some of them are acute factors they are immediate they are short time but they have high impact such as ransomware operation kernel exploit then there are chronic stressors which are long term we don't know about them really but they are persistent in the systems for example documentation gaps the documentation gap uh, are like very are long term right they they uh, a documentation gap can be uh, in the in our systems or our, our hum, human uh, systems for a long time and it can be very uh, difficult now uh, there are some hu human error 
human error which are also long term and viral, which are persistent and you, and we don't really identify them and then there is blame game in the systems right now failures are in, inevitable we know that but how, what can we do about them then there is this key resilience resilience is your defense so what is resilience resilience is the ability of a system to gracefully adapt its functioning in the response to changing conditions so that it can continue thriving right so failures happen but if our system is resilient we can do and we can grow right so uh, let's see uh, let's see some of the features of resilience and let's see what, what's the portion of the resilience so uh, resilience consists of uh, these five factors these these five features so the first one is safety boundaries the second one is interaction across space and times then flexibility and openness to change then feedback loops and learning culture then critical functionality i'll explain them uh, one by one so what are safety boundaries so we we the safety boundaries are for our system when we define that our system will work under these boundaries and it it is it is not being op operable outside of these uh, boundaries we we create these boundaries and then there is this critical functionality critical functionality is based for our resilience it's uh, it uh, we define that our system should perform these functions at every time and these are these are some of the basic things we our system should perform then there are these interaction across space and time in our systems uh, there there will be interaction between uh, between components right so we, it, it's uh, we should we should con, uh, we should maintain resilience in our system so that these interactions are happening and are yeah better now uh, flexibility and openness to change our systems should be openness to the change and they should be flexible so that they can be resilient then we have this feedback loops and learning culture we should have these loops or we should have this feedback mechanism so that we can learn about our systems what's happening in them what's going with them right and one of the example you can take is let's create a dish so critical functionality will be the base the milk you you will be having critical functionality as a milk and safety boundaries as uh, safety boundaries as sugar interaction across the space time as let's say uh, uh, let's say almonds, uh, flexibility and openness to change as a uh, honey and feedback loops and learning changes, some flavor, strawberry flavor or chocolate flavor, whatever you want, right? So all of these, all of these features, all of these components come together and make our system resilience. So uh, unknown unknowns, what, what are unknown unknowns actually? So we have this um, uh, metric on the left hand side, right? Uh, you can see uh, known knowns. No knowns are the things we are aware and we understand. Okay, the, these are the things and we know they they may happen, right? Then there are these known unknowns, things we are aware but we don't understand what really they are. Then there are these unknown knowns, things we understand but are not aware of, right? And then uh, then we have these unknown unknowns, things neither we are aware and neither we understand. So one of the example can be on the right hand side. So for example, known knowns recipes automations algorithms you 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 have these lights light out manufacturing systems find uh, finding an uh, item on a list uh, they exist there and you understand right and then the, you have these known unknowns they 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 uh, they, uh, they can be these uh, uh, incomplete theorems uh, right and uh, then we have these unknown knowns we we don't we can't explain them or we can't ex explain them simply or exactly but we know, we are aware of them how to drive a car we we know that we can drive a car but we can't really explain how to really drive a car because it it may change according to the in individual right then we then there is this unknown unknowns no construct example we don't know about them what about weather next month what about uh, score for super bowl right we don't know about that right so and, uh, here you can see this matrix again so known unknown the data you want to track but can't really but can't currently right then uh, you have this known known data you are currently tracking unknown known how much of your traffic is real and then you have this unknown known the analysis and the experiments you do but but data from the multiple sources combined in one place so you don't know what it is where it is right 
so for known known things we know that they exist there and we are aware of them we understand them we can do testing we can do uh, unit testing we can do integration testing because we know they exist there and we can test them but for the unknown unknown we don't know what they are and how they are and what even if they exist or not experimentations we apply experiments and we see what's happening there what's the scenario there what what's what's going on with our system to know about the unknown unknowns right so uh, what 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 all of the all of these uh, have to do with the security right see uh, uh this this is a report uh, created by ibm uh, in 2020 so if you see the, uh, the, the uh, this data breaches uh, in this uh, graph, you, if you can see 48% of data breaches happens because of human errors or the system glitches. And other, other are by malicious attacks. So if we are able to handle the uh, this human error or the system glitches or this misconfiguration, which are happening, Humans or the systems. If we are to handle this misconfiguration, we will be able to decrease uh, the data breaches by a lot of percentage, right? So yeah, unknown unknowns uh, refer to the risk or the vulnerabilities that we are not aware of and therefore cannot anticipate, right? But in the context of security, they represent unforeseen threats that emerge due to complexity and unpredictability. And these can be very serious for our system. So we should we should be aware of them. We should know about them. We should we should learn about them, right? So that we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, make our system resilient to, uh, be, um, because uh, uh, towards them, right? We can we can be confident. We can be confident that we don't have these unknown unknowns, right, in our system. These are some of the unknown unknowns in the security systems. Uh, abuse of system resources. Uh, how do how do unproved and basic images in your image repositories propagate into your CI/CD pipeline, right? And are your APIs auto scaling? Impact of being able to write to disk in your container, or impact of using a sudo command com, sudo command in your containers? What's happening there? Uh, can can we get unrestricted root access to the underlying host propagate, or can can we get uh, can we escalate the RPACs? So all of these all of these are unknowns. I have listed some of them, but yeah, there are a lot of unknown unknowns and we don't really know about them, right? So we know what are unknown unknowns now. And yeah, moving to next is chaos engineering. So you, you may have heard about chaos engineering in uh, today's session and I hope you got a better understanding about chaos engineering. So I'll just give you a brief uh, intro of chaos engineering. So chaos engineering is a discipline to identify the weaknesses in our system by by intentionally breaking the system and in, into a controlled environments, right? So, so the main concept behind the chaos engineering is to collect information, uh, collect into information from our systems, right? So, yeah, if you can see this uh, Venn diagram, uh, yeah. And these are some of the tools uh, uh, in the community uh, uh, for chaos engineering, uh, the chaos mesh, the chaos, mon chaos monkey and the litmus chaos. So yeah, so how to do chaos engineering? Uh, that should uh, may be arising. Um, that should may arise in our mind, right? So you first select the experiment, uh, experiment which which is suitable for your uh, system or which which is suitable according to your needs. Then you run those experiments, um, run uh, break the system or yeah, and then you observe the result of the experiments. Okay, what what what's happening with the system when I when I'm applying this experiment? What's happening when I'm breaking that component, right? And from the, from these ob observation, you gather the learnings, you gather the results, and then you 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 do this step again. Yeah. So unknown unknowns and chaos. When you add chaos with unknown unknown, what happens? So un uh, uh, addressing unknown unknowns is essential. And by 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 help by the help of chaos engineering, it it help us to simulate adverse scenarios and failures and helping us to uncover those hidden vulnerabilities and which, which which will go unnoticed, right? So we know about unknown unknowns now and we we know what is chaos. And, but what happens when we apply chaos to security, unknown unknowns, right? So what is security chaos engineering? So the security, the identification of security control failures through proactive experimentation and 
breaking our systems or uh, finding those vulnerabilities and unknown unknowns builds a confidence in our system ability to defend against the real scenarios or the real malicious condition in production and this definition is given by uh, uh, is written in the book security Ch chaos engineering uh, written by aaron and kelly and yeah so also uh, a, di a different uh, uh, another uh, definition of security chaos engineering so security chaos engineering is a set of principles and practices that help you design build and operate complex systems that are more resilient to attack and other type of failures too so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just show you a, a map of uh, this uh, se uh, security chaos engineering. So what happens is, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, Sarana, uh, is it is it visible uh, or should I zoom it a little bit? Okay, uh, I'll just share another screen then. So I hope uh, it's visible now. Okay. So so uh, this is a mind map of security chaos engineering uh, answering some of the question right so the first thing uh, when you when you uh, see security chaos engineering is what is security chaos, chaos engineering right so it is it, it just that you are applying chaos engineering uh, for for the print, uh, for uh, cyber uh, for cyber security uh, purposes or for the security systems and you are following the principles uh, uh, principle of security right that's uh, that's what security chaos engineering and it it help us to identify uh, yeah i'll just zoom a little bit on. so yeah so uh, by 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 um, by applying security in chaos, identify some of the security chaos fail, failures we don't even know that exist in our system and it's a proactive uh, approach of experimentation to build confidence in our systems right now, why should you why should you do chaos? Uh, why sh why should you do security chaos engineering? It will help us to detect and uh, identify the security blind spots we don't even know exist in our systems. Uh, for example, we don't know if if a container is able to execute pseudo commands. We don't even know. Uh, let's say we if we don't know that there are some unapproved unapproved base images being used in our ports or our systems. Right now. Security chaos engineering help us to move from cyber security to cyber resiliency, or it's 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 uh, it's that you you can uh, you 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 are applying the facts and you you are applying the effects of cyber security in in your systems. You are striking uh, an effective balance there. So yeah, we we by applying security chaos engineering, we overcome the security theater and make fact based decision that leverage hard evidence, right? Now, where should you apply? Where should you apply the security chaos, chaos engineering? Start where convenient, local or dev environment. It doesn't matter. You you should start with your known production environment that will be really great. Now, aim to arrive at produ production. Uh, that's your de destination, right? But start with local and or uh, dev environment. Yeah. So, who should apply security chaos engineering? Cybersecurity professionals, security engineer, detection engineer, incident response team. Everybody can apply. Even SRE is engineer. It it can be a uh, it can be part of our continuous learning in our systems. Now it's also useful for non technical professionals such as ransomware scenarios that can uh, that that can be used to practice crisis communication. Security chaos engineering can be uh, used to detect the human interaction uh, happening when when a uh, when attack when attack happens in our system how humans interact with each other how humans deal with each other during these uh, these scenarios we can use we can use security chaos engineering to also uh, get also ident uh, also like simulate stimulate those uh, scenarios now how will you uh, how will you apply security chaos engineering start with some most basic experiments let's say you want to apply uh, experiment for 
uh, AWS 3 bucket where where you, you are hosting a video service. You want to just check like if any attacker is able to uh, get those videos, if any attacker is able to get access of those videos. So you just start with some basic experiment and then at pace you you increase uh, increase at your pace. And yeah, I'll I'll show you the I'll show you a diagram where I will be showing you how how this uh, starting phase comes right. So I'll just share my another tab. So yeah, you got you got the idea of the mind bam. You got what what is security chaos engineering? Why should we apply it? Where should we apply it? And how should we apply it? Right. So, yeah. So, if you Google what is security is chaos engineering, you will find the you will find uh, you will you will find this uh, some of these uh, resources. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so if you google what is security chaos engineering you will find some you will find some of these resources uh, there is this good book uh, written by kelly shotris and aaron Hart. i also got one and it's a really good book uh, for understanding what is security in chaos engineering and how should you apply it and then the then there is the uh, there are some of the resources such as this uh, talk uh, by these folks and then we we recently also got a talk uh, by sayan uh, uh, on the on uh, on zero trust resilience, uh, zero trust chaos experiments in our cloud native uh, environment. But it talks about uh, security chaos engineering. It also gives a demo how to apply uh, security chaos engineering with the help of. So yeah, sh uh, do check it, check out them. Okay, uh, moving ahead. Yeah, so how to perform security chaos engineering in your in your environments? So. Is the same uh, is the same log logic of applying a chaos engineering in your environment. So we 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 here we inject the security experiments. We execute them in our systems. Then we monitor how they are behaving, uh, how how they are behaving, right? Then we analyze. We, we collect results. We collect reports, and then we see how what what happened. What happened uh, during these scenarios? Then we 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 plan for these results we see uh, how can we uh, how can we change our system so that these scenarios doesn't happen again right and this loops goes on and goes on and we gather knowledge about our experience systems cap capabilities so yeah and there are some of the lesson lessons you should uh, you should also see uh, i got these lessons from the same book so uh, you should you should start in non production environment you can still learn a lot and use past incidents uh, as a source of experiments use past incidents such as if they if there any ransom uh, where incident happened in your system if if there uh, some uh, privilege escalation happened in your system you learn from them and use them the experimental findings yeah. so uh, moving and uh, when creating experiments uh, when creating uh, chaos experiments in general we we start with uh, we start with writing our hypothesis so hypotheses are the assumptions we make about our uh, we make about reality that inform uh, that inform what experiment we could conduct right so uh, when we when we start to design hypotheses we start with them with a model of target system steady state crisis uh, the normal op the normal operational behavior of a system and if you remember uh, the first portion of the resilience is to identify the crit critical functionalities. The first in ingredient of the recipe, the milk of the recipe, right? So yeah. So we identify the critical functionalities. We identify the wh what is milk in our re recipe, and we document those uh, those characteristics. And then we start asking questions: What could and what should? We start. Uh, we we start asking these questions. What do we expect to happen in our uh, in the experiment? What are the specific criteria and characteristics? And what what are the variables which we, which will be uh, which will be used in our experiments? And what are the what are the assumptions we are uh, we are we are assuming uh, that our system have? And what what's the scope of the experiment? That's also we should uh, think about it, right? 
now uh, you can use uh, this disease and trees so disease and trees allow us to capture the uh, capture a mental model of how our system uh, how our how our systems can be attacked by attackers and how how our system may respond to them right if you rem uh, if you remember uh, uh, i i showed you that mind map right uh, so if so i i told you like we start with the uh, easiest phase we start with the easiest phase attacker can inter uh, attacker can uh, breach into our systems so we start with uh, some basic uh, basic uh, uh, things for example we if we set our s3 bucket to public yeah an attacker can uh, attack it but we also created this uh, this uh, we we also disallowed the uh, crawling on the site maps right so th this is basic one this is the basic uh, basic attack uh, attacker can do on our system then we start uh, thinking about it more we start adding complexity we started uh, we started to think about okay what 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 meeting can do on our system what what other approach he can he can take for our systems right so it 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 just help us to uh, like a uh, uh, create a mental model of uh, how attackers are likely to reach their goal from easiest part to hardest it includes the potential mitigations you can deploy uh, and yeah so and yeah these are some of the examples of the security chaos experiments i'll be showing you two experiment uh, two example uh, for two environments uh, the first one is the cloud native environment and the second one is the uh, production infrastructure so uh, let's say uh, if we if we disable read only access for our file system and volumes you should ask questions uh, what is the impact of being able to write to disk in your containers can, can can we can we detect the can we detect whether we are able to detect uh, whether we are able to detect if uh, if a container if a, if a attacker is able to write in our systems right next next experiment can be enable anonymous access in your orchestrators in your kubernetes cluster now uh, is anonymous access uh, disabled or disabled or enabled in our orchestrator you should you should question about that and we will get answered to this all all of these questions by applying these experiments right are you performed by anonymous users how quickly are you able to disable the anonymous users now uh, another experiment can be remove or corrupt the random http headers from the apis now are you able to detect that rest bodies which don't match our intended content in the headers so yeah these experiments can be used to identify these uh, these security questions about our systems now for production infrastructure let's say if you delete bash history is there any effect on your production operation when we delete it and are you able to detect it uh, when we delete it right are you uh, another experiment can be when you execute sudo commands now are you able to detect uh, uh, ex execution of uh, sudo commands uh, can you really execute sudo uh, in production all of uh, we can get answer for all of these questions so yeah uh, that's all uh, from my side and yeah i hope uh, you you got some insight from uh, this session and what is chaos engineering and how you can use that so yeah